UFO spotted? A UFO hovering over Air Force One at LAX during President Joe Biden's fundraising trip to Los Angeles earlier this week has allegedly been caught on camera. For the Daily Mail, the object was described as a white or silver sphere seen hovering near the president's jet. Hmm. According to the Daily Mail, eyewitnesses spotted an LAPD helicopter circling the, quote, stationary object. Joining us to discuss this exciting development is Harvard's esteemed physicist, Dr. Avi Loeb. Welcome, Dr. Loeb, back to the show. Thanks for having me. It's a great pleasure. So what do you think we are seeing there um, on, on the camera? Uh, what p could potentially explain this? And it, could it be uh, an unidentified aerial flying object the way people have expected? Yeah, the fundamental question is whether it's human made or uh, something from outside of this earth. But uh, I would uh, uh, assume that it must be human made uh, to start with. Uh, and then, of course, we need better data. We need to look at uh, better images uh, and um, not obtain from uh, uh, just people who happen to be at the right place at the right time, but uh, with scientific instruments. So uh, I reserve my judgment. I should say we have... Uh, about 100,000 objects uh, uh, over the past month that we monitored with the uh, Galileo Project Observatory uh, at Harvard University. And we are applying a very uh, careful analysis using uh, machine learning uh, to figure out whether we are looking at natural objects like birds or uh, human-made objects like drones, balloons, uh, airplanes. And you would expect those human-made objects to be around the president's uh, airplane. The question is whether we recognize it. I mean, our people know what it is. Uh, and if not, whether it's some adversarial country. I mean, we know about the Chinese uh, spy balloon that was shut down uh, uh, almost a year ago. Now, the object's been likened to Reaper drones used in the Middle East. I can imagine a world where the military is monitoring the skies around the president's Air Force One jet, but I can also imagine a world where extraterrestrial life is interested in figures like the president of the United States. There have been increased UFO sightings around nuclear facilities. So I don't know, I'm kind of on the fence as to, to which side I fall on. I haven't seen Reaper drones in use in person. But uh, which way do you, do you fall when you think about something like this? We, we assume that it is, is human man-made, but what do you make of the UFOs being sighted more around nuclear facilities and now potentially the president's Air Force One jet? Well, I'm just like you. I'm uh, not decided yet because uh, obviously there are people within uh, milita the military and the intelligence agencies that are talking about objects they cannot identify. And I was uh, at the Washington uh, National Cathedral with uh, Avril Haines, the director of national intelligence. And I asked her, you know, I, I said, you submitted reports to Congress about these uh, unidentified anomalous phenomena. Uh, and you have a bachelor's degree in physics from the University of Chicago. What do you make of these objects? What's your gut feeling? And she said, I don't know. Now, one thing is clear. There, there are lots of objects in the sky, and most of them are likely to be balloons, uh, drones, airplanes. So we really need to do a very thorough job to exclude the majority of the objects that have simple explanations. And that's what Aero, the All Domain Anomaly Resolution Office, is attempting to do about past reports, uh, hundreds of them. And I visited them a couple of weeks ago in Washington, D.C. Uh, they are still of the opinion that only a few percent of the objects that they looked into um, as a result of reports from military or intelligence agencies, uh, only a few percent are unidentified. The rest they can figure out. But, uh, you know, it's not so much about the rest. Uh, even if one in a thousand is of extraterrestrial origin, that would have a huge impact on humanity. When we last checked in with you, Dr. Loeb, I believe you were at sea um, in your project to investigate um, a, a, a debris from objects that may have crashed in the ocean that you think could possibly show uh, an, an extraterrestrial origin or an off-world origin. Uh, could you give us an update on how that project is going? Right. So. Um, we went uh, back in June for uh, two weeks uh, in search of materials from the first 
recognized interstellar meteor, an object the size of a watermelon that collided with Earth, and the fireball that it created as a result of its friction on air was spotted by uh, U.S. government satellites. And uh, uh, we knew the location. We went there with a ship and uh, scooped the ocean floor for any magnetic particles that may have been melted off the surface of this object. And amazingly, we found uh, 750 such uh, droplets uh, that uh, some of them are background, some came from other meteors, but we found a unique type of uh, spherules, these droplets, that was never seen before in terms of its material composition. And I'm talking about 60 elements from the periodic table. We are now in the process of summarizing all the results. Initially, a few months ago, we released uh, some preliminary results from uh, studying just a tenth of all the spherules that we found, but not, by now we went through all of them. And uh, we are now working on the paper that will include all the data. It was a lot of work, six months work worth of uh, analysis uh, at the laboratory of my colleague at Harvard, Stein Jacobson. Uh, he's a geochemist, has uh, uh, some of the best uh, instruments in the world, mass spectrometers and uh, uh, imagers and so forth. And we also benefited from the X-ray uh, fluorescence analyzer in the laboratory of uh, Royal Tagel uh, at the Brucker Corporation in Berlin. Uh, so we will summarize all these results, but the bottom line is we found uh, near the meteor path uh, a type of molten droplets that was never seen before and that's probably of extrasolar origin because it doesn't match the composition of rocks on Earth, Mars, the Moon, asteroids, anything within the solar system. And the next expedition that we are starting to plan right now would be to find bigger pieces. Now we know where to go. And uh, of course, we, we, if you find a bigger piece, you can tell the difference between a rock and a technological gadget, because a gadget may have buttons on it. And if we do find something like that, the question uh, will be whether to press a button. <laughs> Are there any other ways you can determine whether something was created by intelligent life or is a material naturally occurring in another solar system? Yeah, I mean, um, the best way to tell that is uh, from a big piece of the object or coming close to an object that is still functional, like an unidentified anomalous uh, phenomenon. Um, so obviously, if you see an object maneuvering in ways that cannot be reproduced by our technological products, and you can tell that it's technological because it has screws and maybe even a label made on some exoplanet, it would be clear beyond any reasonable doubt that we're dealing with a piece of technology from another place uh, outside the solar system. And uh, then the question would be, uh, what information is it seeking? Uh, what is its goal? And uh, it may be purely technological with artificial intelligence, so we might use our own uh, AI systems to figure out extraterrestrial AI systems. Um, another possibility is that we find uh, space trash, uh, an object that is not functional anymore. For example, this meteor that, you know, if we find uh, a piece of it uh, at the bottom of the Pacific Ocean, um, it will obviously not be functional uh, because it, it exploded in the atmosphere, but you can still learn a lot. Uh, about the the object itself. And, you know, the fundamental question is whether the government uh, has already such information because uh, the government monitors the sky all the time. Astronomers look at small regions of the sky and focus on very distant sources of light. And if something flies overhead, uh, astronomers disregard it. So it's really the Galileo project, the first time that there is a scientific a uh, study of the full sky at all times. But it's possible the government has its day job uh, for national security purposes to do exactly that. So it's quite possible the government has some information. And we heard from David Grush uh, when he testified in front uh, of the House of Representatives that he believes there are programs for retrieval and reverse engineering of alien sp uh, spacecraft. And I actually had a conversation with him uh, a couple of weeks ago for more than an hour. And I tried to get a better sense of what he knows about um, the, the, the government programs, but he says that he cannot really talk about it uh, for legal reasons. So 
uh, unfortunately, based on the publicly available information, I'm with you. I'm, I'm split. I'm not clear yet. I mean, it's really all about the evidence. Uh, yes. And I haven't seen it yet. Yeah, I, I so agree. And, and I, I wonder if you feel this way, uh, and we'll, we'll let you go in a second, but just quickly, um, it, it can be frustrating. I mean, it's so interesting to hear people come forward and testify that they they have sometimes direct knowledge or sometimes slightly indirect knowledge that they've talked to someone who has seen uh, either evidence of, of, of remains of extraterrestrial life and that the government has that and it, it's like being hidden somewhere. And I, then my next question is, okay, where's that facility? Well, let's, let's go there. And we never get the actual, yes, it's here. Or, or then or they'll say, I'm being you know, told I can't talk about this. And then I want to, okay, well, who's telling you that? Let's haul that person before Congress. It starts to become very, um, very, very frustrating from a, from a genuine interest right. and, a, and a, a perspective that this could very much be real. And I would totally believe that the government could have this information and try to cover it up. But at some point, someone needs to come forward with some actual verifiable facts about it. it, it what, what's your sense of that? Exactly. Exactly. And also, it should get to the attention of scientists like myself, because my day job is to figure out what's outside the solar system. The government's day job is to figure out what's uh, produced by adversarial countries. You know, it's a very different job. And if they have information about my day job, uh, <laughs> I would like to know it and help them figure it out. Uh, and it's really the job of science, because anything about the universe should be shared by all humans. All the, inf the information we know about the Big Bang, the expansion of the universe was never classified. And this is of the same category. We just need to figure out whether we have a neighbor. Uh, and um, I should say that um, uh, I'm, uh, when I lean in the direction of uh, skepticism, you know, I suddenly have an event like the one happened a few days ago when I had a group of people uh, from Washington, D.C., uh, in my home uh, for a visit to discuss some other physics project. And one of them uh, was a high level official, uh, uh, former official in Lockheed Martin. And it, I, I just wanted to clear uh, my uh, understanding. And I asked him, uh, well, there is this testimony about potentially corporations or, um, you know, uh, outside entities that are outside government that have possession of uh, materials of interest uh, in terms of uh, extraterrestrial, uh, you know, uh, spacecraft. And I expected him to say, no, that's complete nonsense. Uh, let's move on to another topic. But instead, he said, you know, it may not be wrong. <laughs> and so, you know, I hear both views. People tell me that they have heard that they know that something is going on, but they don't show the evidence. And at the same time, you know, uh, when uh, uh, when uh, I try to get uh, more information about what's known, I, I, I never get very far. And so out of frustration, you know, as a scientist, I, I realize the sky is not classified, the oceans are not classified, and so I'm trying to figure out the answer myself. But it would save me decades of my time. <laughs> you know, life is short. I would like to know if the government has it already because then I, I, I'll be glad to help them figure it out and mm. I will not have to waste uh, decades of my time trying sure. to do it uh, if they already have it. Dr. Avi Loeb, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. Thanks for having me.